You're listening to Tea Life Audio, a podcast about the Japanese way of tea and related arts. For show notes and other resources, go to teelife.audio. Welcome to episode 109. My name is Marius, and uh, I'm uh, back in Japan, Kyoto. And today I'm uh, sharing a table at the uh, Alcove Bar with two of the current uh, Midori Kai students. Would you introduce yourself? My name is Tiasa. I originally come from Slovenia, but I moved to Germany six years ago, and that's where I studied to do tea. My name is Jaden. I'm from the States, and uh, I came from the Boston Tonko Fire. Awesome. Okay. I love to hear how you got into tea. I, I find it fascinating because there's so many ways to, to get into tea. Uh, would you start, Tiasa? Yeah. So our Berlin Tanko Kai has some presentations at the Museum for Asian Arts that sadly closed down two years ago, but will reopen as a different museum next uh, September. Mm. And uh, I went to the museum and saw the presentation of the tea there. So that's how I became interested uh, and decided to join. When was this? This was three years ago. Three years ago. So you've been studying for three years? Yes. All in Germany? All in Germany, in Berlin. <laughs> you speak fluent German? Yes, I learned since I was little. And six years ago, I did my test for entering the university. So ah. German is quite okay. <laughs> <laughs> we learn German in, in school. I don't speak it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it usually goes. <laughs> um, so what, what about tea was it that you were drawn to? So I was quite interested in Japanese traditional arts ever since I was a child and I saw documentaries about the geisha. Mm-hmm. So I really <laughs> liked the whole kimono and the graceful movements. And then um, I used to study ballet. So mm. when I stopped dancing, I was searching for a hobby that would be just as graceful. Mm. And I really, really like the movements of the people doing tea, especially the hisaku movements <laughs> in Huda season. So this is what I was very drawn to. One of my students said that he's also doing ballet. Mm. He said that there's lots of similarities. Yeah. Like hold, mm-hmm. you're supposed to hold your hand as if there's an egg in your hand. <laughs> this is similar to ballet. Like the, the shoulder, man, yeah. shoulder out <laughs> to yeah. get around movement, yes. straight back. Especially holding the hisaku, it kind of feels like the second uh, like the first position in ballet. So uh, if you put the shoulders as you would for first position, you have a uh, nice gracious uh, kamai. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Jane, how did you get into tea? Oh, dear me. Um, it's actually funny. Before tea, I didn't know a thing about Japan. I didn't watch any anime. I didn't know anything about the culture. Um, I just knew it was um, a, a place that had strange people in my high school who liked anime, and uh, and I generally stayed away. Um, but then when I came into uh, university, um, the uh, in my freshman year, they had like an activities fair with all of the different uh, student organizations and things that you could you could participate in, and uh, they had this tiny tiny little table there um, with with. One girl, her name is Rachel, sitting at it in a, in a small sign in a plate of mochi that she had gotten at the Asian supermarket down the street. <laughs> uh, but I said, you know what, I like tea because I liked coffee. And from that, I mm. got into to, to, like steeped tea. Mm. I like tea. I'll, I'll go check it out. And I went in um, to the first cake they had in, mm. in that uh, September. Was this in Boston too? This was in Boston, yeah. Mm. This was at, at uh, Harvard. Mm. So I just graduated in, in May and, and came here uh, to Midori Kai. In uh, in September, um, mm. so I'm a September intern. Tiasha was uh, an April intern. Mm. Excuse me, while I do the calendar in my head. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, so um, I so I entered in in the Harvard group. So so Harvard has a Tashitsu um, tea room donated by Dai mm. Um in '96. I want to say, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, and uh, so it has a it's had a, a tea club that's been operating since a little bit before then actually mm. for many years was mm-hmm. was led um, solely by Aiko sensei who sadly mm. passed away just uh, just a couple months ago um 
but a few years ago it was taken over by uh, Edison K. Boston, and so now there's a partnership. Yeah. And so Glenn Sensei is the official head teacher, but mm. most of the lessons week to week have up till now been done by Miho Sensei and Yuko Sensei, uh, mm. if you're familiar with them at all. Um, and just recently, Sarah Kogenstein, or you may know her. Um, she does Zen a lot. She's a, <laughs> currently a PhD student. Oh, um, she, she, she did Midori Kai a couple of years ago, yeah. Um, yeah I, I've heard mentioned, but I'm not sure I've met her. So she's been doing tea for, oh, like, I guess 15 years now. So she had been doing it for 10 years when I when I uh, uh, met her. But she was the one who did the first Temai for me. Mm. Um, and because she was so skilled, it was just brilliant, fluent Temai. Um, mm. The teacher didn't say a thing. And after that, like, one Hakobi Usucha, I just fell in love with tea. <laughs> and from there, I gained an interest in traditional culture. And then I started studying the language. Mm. And now I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so that was five years ago. Um, four years ago, four years. a little, little bit over four years. I always ago, yeah. get confused about the American school system. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like sophomore. I have no clue what it is. I just know it's a thing. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So it was. It's a four-year program, like most American universities. Mm. And so uh, I was just a member for the first year, and then the second year I became co-president um, for the first semester, and then the second semester. Mm. Um, Throughout, through my third and fourth years, I was the president of the mm. Chalo Society mm. um, and gave Glenn Sensei the largest headaches he's ever had in his life. <laughs> 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 oh, dear me. <laughs> okay, so I've talked to some Idolika students. Uh, we, we recorded this uh, with a Spider-Man bar last time, <laughs> a few years ago, 2017, I think. Oh, dear. So I'm curious, what have happened to the program since then? I know there's some teachers who have retired, there's new teachers coming in. Uh, are you are you still doing kind of the Okeko part separate from the Japanese students? Yes. Mm. So mm. our day I think as it was before uh, consists out of two parts. So we have two lectures in the uh, yeah. in before noon and then one jitsugi uh, for total of three hours in the afternoon. Mm. Um, I think what mostly changed are indeed the teachers. So mm. we are now very happy because we have um, one of the Gyotai Sensei, Suzuki Sensei, studying, uh, teaching us, not studying. Um, and we have Sugitani Sensei um, teaching us once a week. And she w- used to be only responsible for the Keiko Chakai before that. Mm. So she wouldn't teach uh, Midori Kai students. So we mm. are very, very lucky to have her. Mm. Suzuki, and, uh, oh. sorry, no, Sugitani Sensei is, is actually one of the direct disciples of Iemoto. Mm. So um, we're, we're looking forward to, to seeing her in a couple of days. There'll be Sudanki on the 19th. Mm. And she'll be doing um, a, uh, a special performance of the Shichijishiki. Um, the the sort of kagetsu and uh, shaza these sort of um, uh, practices the ones that you draw the the, the tabs for um, and uh, they'll be doing a performance of this during um, the sotanki mm-hmm. as an offering to um, um, since um, mm-hmm. and then we'll be able to attend her the chakai that they're leading the mm-hmm. little um, one that I think they're actually holding in the second floor of our dorm, which is a little <laughs> bit interesting. <laughs> so the case you can Yeah, so we, we actually live in this this massive building now, um, uh, which the like fourth, fifth, and sixth floor is totally unused. Or sorry, mm. the fifth, sixth floor is totally unused. Mm. The second floor is a large like Tommy practice space that they'll occasionally have classes and things in. Mm. And then Midori Kai just spreads out over the entire third and fourth floors. Mm. Um so, uh, you know, we're not sure, um, you know, what future Midorikai generations. They might be with the Gakuen, say, in their dorms. They might mm. still be in uh, buildings like this. But we're very grateful for, uh, at least right now, the ability to sort of... <laughs> take some space. Take some space, you know, <laughs> spread our legs out, mm. keep all of our dogu haphazardly stacked in a room. <laughs> <laughs> we were very lucky because as we... Th- uh, got to reside in uh, Chadokenshu Kaikan and do have those two floors. We have all of the rooms on the third floor available for use. So 
we have a laundry room and we have a practice practice room where we have a tatami laid out and all the practice mm. dogos with mirrors around so you can really check your posture there. <laughs> we have a kimono room, we have a, a multiple storage rooms as well as a dogo room mm. and a shared kitchen. So we are very, very lucky. So, I, so where is this place in relation to the school? This is around five minutes north from school. Mm. Mm. And if you're late, three minutes. <laughs> if you have long legs like Jaden, <laughs> yes, three <laughs> minutes. Though I gotta say, ki- kimono really does hamper. Unless you're wearing hakama, kimono really hampers your ability to walk quickly when you're late. <laughs> as as Chasha is is well aware. Unfortunately, I have a tendency to be a couple minutes late, and Chasha is my toban partner. So, okay. um, one of the the recent developments. I think they were doing it the last time, or I think they were doing it in 2017. But I know that. Um, even just like less than a decade prior, people weren't doing this. But now, Midori Kai, like while we still have separate classes and separate keiko, the, the, we say jitsugi here to, to not get confused with um, lectures. So mm-hmm. the lectures um, and then the like tea practice, jitsugi or keiko. Um, these are still separate from the gakuense because well, they're done in English, mm-hmm. but we have them in the gakuen building. Um, and we uh, also, because we're now using Gakuen supplies and things, mm. we join the Gakuen say for their uh, Mizuya uh, Toban, oh. which basically is just taking care of the building every day, basically scrubbing it from top to bottom, getting everything prepared, everything ready mm. for the classes in the morning, putting it away, cleaning it, getting it ready for the next day, mm. and so for a full I, week. I think that merger happened, it was mostly done by 2017, I think. Okay. Where they moved Gakuense and Midorikai Toban together. Oh, okay. Because when we yeah. did it, we were assigned certain things that we were supposed to do, and we were in charge of organizing how to do it. Mm. Uh, and the Gakuense would have other things to do. So, mm. for instance, I remember we would do the top floor uh, sweeping. Mm. I think mm. we also would clean out the rope and prepare the rope on the top floor. Mm. But the first floor tea rooms were all done by uh, Japanese students. I see. No, I, now we completely are merged mm. and oh, yeah. we have just different tasks. So uh, it's not even that Jaden and I are working always together. We get separated as well. So. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's, we are treated just as Gakuen students mm. are treated. I think, I think that's good. It's really quite nice. You yeah. get to know some of the Gakuenses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I really, they're they're really quite lovely, many of them. Um, and uh, it's really interesting because you know it's not just the like three year mm. program full. Mm. So like the full three year program, the Chadoka. Mm. It's not just that. You also have people for the Ichimen course, mm. the, the one year course, which are coming in at Shikaden and going up so they have a little bit different experience but then you also have the um uh kinkyu kai the um mm. or the kinkyu course uh the literally research course mm. although it's also just classes and no research um but uh, um those are all like very senior teachers who are coming mm. back in and doing like crazy upper tamai three, uh, and three lots months of, lots of shiki months or mm. six months mm. If you look on the board and you see a massive list of kanji with all those difficult doga written out, you're like, yep, that's the kin- that's a kinkyu. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's really interesting. We're like working alongside um, these teachers. Um, but the thing is that they're treated just like students. And hmm. so uh, strangely enough, you know, while we address the um, gakuen teachers, you know, we speak uh, up to them because hmm. they're above us and everything. We speak equal with the other students. Hmm. Um it's really funny because the, the 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 students in these three six month courses are considered to be students, and so we speak on them equally yeah. equal level when in fact they're actually teachers yeah, yeah. and way senior to <laughs> us, and some of them more senior than some of the Gakuen teachers. Yeah. Um, so it's really interesting that they're they're taking this opportunity to sort of just um, become students again, mm-hmm. and so it's kind of it's really nice to get those different perspectives, get the the, the different feelings of people mm-hmm. from different points in their life. Mm-hmm. You, you've already been here many, many months. Yes, I've been here for seven months now. Seven months. <laughs> so, what did you both of you know about the program before you came? 
I knew very little to almost nothing because I am the first student from Berlin to come to um, Midorikai and m since my teacher is Japanese she didn't really know about this program until I found it online <laughs> so she um, then acqu uh, acquired a bit of knowledge by asking her other um, <laughs> friends that if they might knew the program but uh, I knew from what I read from blogs so there are a couple of blogs online however they're mostly from the previous time when the Midorikai was not a part of Gakuen yet mm. so the information is quite a different from mm. today so the, especially the teachers are different some um, structures of, of the day are different mm. so but I had a general idea of what I'm coming at so I knew I'm not coming on vacation I knew I'm coming here to study and learn and that it will sometimes be hard but mm. good. I, I learned it turns it. out most of the time I it's hard I learned a thing in, <laughs> in Finland uh, in October that the, the Finland has two entryways into Midorikai program one is like everybody else through the Tankukai the other is a general scholarship and the wording of the advertisement for the general scholarship was basically gave the impression that you would do some studies a few hours every day not even five days a week and it would be easy breezy Fake. Yeah. Fake. Guys. They have now gotten it changed. <laughs> but I met a lot of the Finnish people who did their first cup of tea in Midorika. Oh, that, goodness. That's a, I've, I've heard of this, and mm. all I can say is, is if any of you listening are considering doing this, please, please, for the love of all that's holy, go to a teacher and learn a little bit of tea before you come, because it makes your life so much easier. Mm. Um, I mean... Like, even for just these first couple months, just, like, theoretically, we start from nothing, but it moves really fast. Mm. So we start from, like, entering the tea room, sitting down, walking, and yes, it takes, like, a week before they start you on the Akobon, the first mm. Demai, and then it takes another week or two or something before they start you on the first using the Hishaku and things like mm. this. But, um... A week is a short time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and to have that body of knowledge to have your body already kind of have memorized mm. the basic steps and then even later when you're starting like the the, the uh, kohai the younger students mm. in my group who entered in, in september um we are just now starting the the konarai so like the kini and date and the different mm. kasaris and mm. things like that um and the fact that many of us have already seen most of them or at least some of them and have mm. some idea of how they work makes it a lot easier because what I've realized so far, um, even with just a couple of months, is that Midorikai is not about Tamai, really. It's, it's almost incidental to what we're doing here, which is the Toban is like what we're doing. The, um, the sort of attending the events is what we're doing. It's the learning how things work here, learning how people approach tea kind of in the tea mm. epicenter mm. here. And so, like, having as much knowledge as you can before you come is, well, not strictly necessary, just it gives you that, oh. that little bit extra mental energy so that you many, can be like, okay, many, I know I can handle Jitsugi today. Many rounds of Finnish uh, people have managed, but I think it was a shock for a lot of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, my senpai came from Finland, but to the Tango Kai, mm. and he has been only studying for a year before he came, mm. so he was basically a beginner. And hasn't done any of the Konarai. Mm. But he was really just willing to study. So I think if you just want, really want it and you really like the, it's definitely possible. Mm. So I don't think you necessarily need to have that much knowledge. Mm. It might sometimes <clears throat> even be better to come with less so you are an unwritten book, so to say. <coughs> you haven't learned all the bad habits yet. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. It is hard to unlearn the bad habits, yeah. Mm. yeah. I... I'm very grateful to my uh, teachers and my Tanko Kai that I had extra support and extra Jitsuki before I came to <laughs> just polish a little bit uh, my Tamai. Maybe just 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 at least for me. Um, I don't I don't know if I'd be able to do it if I was learning it for the first time, but that may be more of a, a testament to my lack of ability than anything mm. else. <laughs> mm. Yes, being from Boston, you probably knew a whole lot before you came. Mm. Being one of the bigger groups. Yeah, I, I mean, I also was in a 
little bit of a, of a lucky situation. The Harvard group was mostly beginners. Mm. Um, uh, and I was very regularly attending because I was leading it. Mm. And because sort of like as I was getting really stressed at school, tea was one of my big mm. ways to mm. calm down. Um, most we had Keiko pretty much every week during classes. We'd have 10, sorry, uh, about 10 to 12 classes per semester. Mm. And then, of course, two, two semesters per year. Mm. So we have about 20 to 24 classes a year. And then each one, I would come around mm. 8.30 or 9 in the morning um, mm-hmm. and then stay. Officially, we ended at 2.30, but I would often stay till like 4. Mm. And so many days, I got to do two tamais or three tamais. <laughs> and um, I kind of like would sometimes push the teachers into, oh, can I do this to my? Can I do that to my? Can I do this to my? Um so I kind of had a very unique situation in that, like, um, a lot of the other students were doing really basic tamais, and so they didn't take up so much time. Mm. And so I was just lucked out and was able to practice a lot more than I normally would. So even though I've only been studying for four years, um, I was able to get, like, more practice than most people mm. are able to just because I lucked out. Mm. Um, and... Uh, also, Glenn Sensei has just been wonderful in, 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 in his <laughs> teaching. Um, uh, yeah, that's so. one of the things with Boston, it seems that it has many opportunities where you can go and learn, yeah. and it's, it's very regular. So if you want, it's available. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the Boston group is a really good one. It's, it's really growing, too. I mean, even in the time that I was there, it was already big when I arrived, and it's even bigger now um, mm-hmm. when I left to Kyoto. Mm-hmm. Um, like they just celebrated, I think it was their yeah. the big yeah. anniversary. Yeah, there was, uh, but that was uh, 10th of October, around. Around there, yeah. Um, because that's when the Finnish event went off. So the yeah. two big yeah. events on the same weekend. Such a shame. Uh, I know. Yeah. But on the other hand, the people who traveled to the Finnish event were mostly European. There was mm. one or two Americans. Mm. Uh, and I guess... In the Boston event, mostly Americans because of the distance and stuff. Yeah. I'm looking forward to get Anthony back on the phone so we can <laughs> get a review of what happened. <laughs> yes, and so one of the one of the teachers from from uh, SNK, uh went as well. One of our mm-hmm. teachers here, um, Ito Sensei, she went, uh, and also one of the Soke mm. as well. One of the Sin family members, um, mm. uh, Reijiro Sama. Mm. Uh, Reijiro is in, as you'll see, often written in. English, or, mm. um, and uh, uh, according to Ido Sensei, um, he enjoyed himself, and she had a wonderful time as well. Mm. And everyone was so nice and lovely, and it was a it was a great event. Mm. I think Glenn Sensei was able to make tea on a, one of the swan boats in the Boston Common, which was a big yeah. I've, I've a seen a I've seen his. a photo of that, mm. and and I heard the same thing. That was something he was dreaming of doing, and I was like, mm. okay, yeah. Everybody has their dreams. <laughs> oh, <it is. laughs> I mean, when you don't know the boats, you don't have a relationship to the boats. A boat is a boat, it's just a boat, right? Uh, but the, these are like distinctive to the Boston Common. Yeah. If, if you go there a lot, then you see them every single time. Yeah. So. That's what I mean. <laughs> I only been to Boston once. Uh, <laughs> Very short well, time. I've we never been to Boston at all, so <laughs> I sadly cannot help. So was, was anything very different? I mean, from what you expected, had you like had you been to Japan before, Midorika, or is this also the first time to Japan? So I was here two times before, each time for three weeks for vacation. Uh, so I have known Kyoto before, but I have never been here for a longer time. So no. yeah, I think uh, what surprised me the most is. I was actually quite prepared to come into a very um, competitive environment, mm. I believe, where people are just like kind of thinking of, of themselves and just trying to get the most of the program. But I was very pleasantly surprised that people actually here like to work together and they really <laughs> like teamwork is yeah. here really the yeah. most important thing yeah. ever oh, like yeah. we cannot do anything if we're not working together if one person is not working then seven others need to work more because mm. of this one person so you always you learn really to take 
care of other people as well to um so this was Osama says you should have a pair of eyes on your back mm. and uh, this is really what you learn here just to observe yeah. and be very uh, cautious of what is happening around yes. you <laughs> but also like your ability to work in a team just grows by 1000 percent and i think this is one of the best things ever mm-hmm. is to have a group of people that you like working with that is one of I'm, the I'm waiting for it to kick in <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the things when i look back and say what is the most important thing i got out of it like yeah. you said it's the teamwork but it's also teamwork with people you don't necessarily like because you're stuck in this group and people, i have no idea what you're talking about and, and people are from very different backgrounds and different ages and everything oh yeah and in my group there were some people i didn't work well with at all but they're like okay they're gonna be here for six months and you're gonna spend every single day alongside them and everything you're gonna do needs to kind of coordinate with them and it forced me to kind of learn that as a skill where in normal society you can just well this tea club i'm gonna go to the other club right or i'm not gonna go attend this event because the guy i don't like is showing right yeah but here you don't have the option you're like committed and locked in with a group for for a year before i came here i was speaking with two members of the slovenian tango kai who were here before Mm -hmm. ziga and katya Mm -hmm. and i think that katya gave me one of the best advices ever she said that this is midorikai is the time where you work very very close with people so you will see their best sides but also their worst sides (laughs) but when you draw a line at the end it you it's always such a nice thing that you accomplish something together so mm. she only looks back with great fondness to this <laughs> group work mm. even though it might not have always been pleasant mm. i really took that to heart <laughs> had you been to japan before then yes yeah so i uh in the summer of 2017 two years ago i was here for three months um i did two months of a language intensive in kamazawa Mm. And then I was in doing travel for about two weeks, so I was able to spend a full week in Kyoto. Mm. And then I did a two weeks program where I taught like a seminar in, in English to mm. Japanese high school students mm. called the uh, H Lab, which was really quite fun. Um, and then last summer I came here and I did three months of research at Kyoto University in uh, quantum optics. So I was um, very different from T. Very, <laughs> very different. I've also left the field now, so. <laughs> um <laughs> but um yes uh I, so i was living actually um just in the uh so kind of roughly on the same latitude mm. in the city as uh where konichian is mm. just a, li- a little bit south um and uh but just by uh ginkakuji mm. you know so at the end of yeah. imadagawa street so near yeah. the kyoto university area mm. um and so uh, a couple times I, I came in this area. Actually, the first the first night I ever landed in in Kyoto, or I ever came to there, I came to Kyoto in uh, 2017. I actually went in the middle of the night and just stood outside the Kabutomo and went, "Wow!" <laughs> and then the guard came up to me and like, "What are you doing? <laughs> no, <Ooh>. go away!" <laughs> um, and then, and then now I walk by it all the time, and I'm like, "Oh, please don't tell me someone sees me doing something wrong." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I should have asked you about the, the tips to Kanazawa before I went there. Oh yeah, it's a <laughs> it's a wonderful city. Um, it's a lot more accessible now that the, the Shinkansen goes there, the bullet train, mm. um, and uh, it's so it actually it has a lot of. It's kind of like Kyoto. It has a lot of the traditional culture. They call it like the little Kyoto because it was it was never bombed during mm. the war. Mm. And in addition to that, during the Edo period, during the the, the Tokugawa shogunate, um, really when when tea was coming about, um, the Maeda family lived in Kanazawa, so it was Kagadomen, and they were extraordinarily wealthy. So they had been granted Kagadomen. Um, by uh, Hideyoshi. Uh, and then when the Tokugawa took over, the Maeda were so strong and wealthy that they couldn't just dispense with them. 
but the Maeda like had to kind of put their money somewhere that wouldn't arouse suspicion. If you have a bunch of money standing around or you maintain a standing army, the Tokugawa would have been like <laughs> very it would have been very hard to convince them that you weren't going to start an uprising. And so what they did is they poured all of their money into arts and into temples and into things like this. Um, uh, so the the in the Urasenke uh, lineage, the fourth, but the first um, Iemoto that was only Urasenke, um, uh, Senso, Soshitsu, uh, he actually left Kyoto and went to Kanazawa and went under the patronage of the Maeda because... Uh, I guess there wasn't room enough in Kyoto for <laughs> Urai and the Mote. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not sure the, the, the specific details of why, but he did go, and he took along with him one of the apprentices, one of the people who worked in the Raku mm. family's <clears throat> ohi, workshop, Ohi. Um, and so the first Ohi, Chozaemon, and uh, Senso went together to Kanazawa. Mm. And, um, I, lo- I looked at Ohi booths. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the the museum there is very similar to the Daku Museum. It, mm-hmm. it, it it has the same feeling. Looked also at stuff for sale, mm-hmm. <laughs> and probably not from the original guy, but lot nice stuff. Mm. Uh, a bit pricey. Any lucky finds? I found one. I didn't buy it. Mm. It was uh, almost a hundred thousand yen for. A oh, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, the first time I went to the Ohi Museum. Um, the not the current Ohi head, but the retired mm-hmm. one was just sitting around in front of the museum, and uh, I had only this was during my language intensive, so I was kind of midway through second year Japanese at this mm-hmm. point. Um, but as soon as I saw him and realized it was it was him, um, somebody said, "Oh, this is the previous headmaster." All the Japanese I knew fled my head, and I was just mm-hmm. sort of nodding my head. Hi, hi, Starster. And then he said something in in English and left the room. But so I had a grand total of about twenty seconds of communication with the previous (laughs) Ohi. Applause. So people, the the ones I saw at least, are usually like a deep dark brown Mm. place. I know that's the where you kind of black and red Mm. being the Raku. So for, for me, now it's November. It's probably going to be December before I see a rope. <laughs> uh, so let's talk a little bit about November. Oh, yes. Dear me. Favorite <laughs> time of the year. <laughs> Why? I really, really enjoy the whole celebratory feeling of Fudo turning to rope. Hmm? So I started doing um, tea in raw season. Mm-hmm. So raw season has a very special meaning to me. Mm. I first learned how to handle hakobi usucha in raw. I first learned how to do koicha in raw. Mm. And I was very, very, very frustrated. <laughs> Excuse me, everyone who helped me going through this frustration. <laughs> so I am very looking forward to go back to where I started. <laughs> uh, and it's, I don't know, it's just something splendid. I like, to, I like to have students transition from the Akimon to Hakobi in raw season. Mm, why so? Because the Hishaku work is He's so sure. much easier. <laughs> so, you can deal with all the other stuff first, and then summer comes, and then you can deal with the extra Hishaku. Mm. That's, and I then that's, Koicha gets uh, yeah. easier. So mm. you've already done the most of the work as mm. Koicha, and then you're like, oh, this is it? I don't need to move around Yeah, we're not doing pirouettes in the, in the Tamaisa. <laughs> mm. um, Although perhaps with your ballet training, pirouettes would not have been very hard. That would be fun. That would uh, be fun. Oh. But, um, have a video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because video is, is, of course, the best medium for a podcast. It's yeah, I think, I think we've posted this video before. Oh, dear. Yeah, November. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the general spender. Also, the sweets. The sweets have a lot of kuri. The chestnut, which I absolutely adore. So, oh, oh. oh I, I see some uh, other opinions <laughs> across the table. For me, like, Suban and Kuri is in the bottom of the sweet hierarchy. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Kuri, the, the actual, like, chestnut itself, um, when I have, like, the whole chestnut in there or the roasted chestnut, that's quite good. 
but I've always found the sort of like quitty powder, like the chestnut ground up mm. powder mixed in with the um the on or or whatever they're putting on the outside, you know, these these sweets mm. that you sometimes get. It's all it's all soft and it's it's the quitty powder sort of mixed in. Mm. These ones I'm starting to like them, but it's been a long road. Um, <laughs> all my favorite flavors are have been acquired tastes. Mm. Black coffee, of course matcha, mm. um, grapefruit things very bitter. Um mm. So, uh, fermented things. So, like, I know that I will like this a lot. Eventually. But I'm still getting there because you have to eat a lot of it and you don't get to eat okashi just every single day. You know? Oh, in Midori well, we, Pie? We, we do, do. <laughs> we do. We do. Yes, yes, yes. But it's not Very always, lovely. it's not always the, 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 the kuri powder in the sweet okashi. So, mm. like, if I was eating it, you know, three times a day for a week, I'm sure I'd love it by the end of the week because I'd finally get accustomed to the taste. <laughs> but... I do remember the first time I ate it in at the Harvard group a couple of years ago. I took a bite and said, mmm, dog food. So, <laughs> uh, but, uh... I cannot understand your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um... I, uh, I actually... This, this actually came up during the... We did the, we helped at the International Chakai. Mm-hmm. So, um, we did some of the my procedures and did a lot of the hakobi delivering tea mm. and sweets to people um, at the international chakai with the ICI members. Mm. So the group that meets on three of the Saturdays per month to mm. do sort of a long form keiko in the Gakuen building. Yeah. Um, the uh, and so they hold the they're kind of it's kind of primarily their event mm. because we have the <clears throat> Christmas chakai that's yeah. just ours. But um, we uh, we partner with them and we do some of the Tanai procedures mm-hmm. and, and help with that mm-hmm. will be it's really fun to be able to work with them mm-hmm. but during that I kept noticing a lot of the sweets kept coming back um, and okay. it was a kuri sweet like the one I was talking mm-hmm. about with the powder mm-hmm. and, and I didn't put it together and so I was saying why are there so like uh, why do we have this whole like bucket basically of half of a sweet mm-hmm. um, and then one of the people pointed out that this is a flavor that's very very difficult for yeah. many non-Japanese mm. to enjoy at the first tasting. Mm. And then all of a sudden it kind of made sense. And I said, ah, yes, I guess these are the sort of things you have to think about. Mm. You know, like like they 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 told they tell us and we, we have to look at the notes for the Christmas Chakai. To pre- while we're preparing for ours, we look at the notes, the responses and the, the criticisms of previous yeah. Chakai's <clears throat> different notes to improve sort of thing. Um, and a lot of times there will be like, there is the sweet, but this ingredient doesn't really seem to agree with many of the people's palates. And mm. you remember, oh, yeah, the foods are a little bit different sometimes. Then mm. you have to take that into consideration. Mm. And it goes through all of tea. You, know? you always need to think about the guests. Know mm. as much as possible about what they prefer, what they don't mm. like. But these days, there's also a lot of allergies. Okay. So first of all, you need to get rid of those. But then you want something that people can enjoy, so you like yeah, you can eat it, but you don't would, would like to eat it. Okay, then that's a problem. Because this is supposed to be a nice event. I did notice a lot of the, the, the backup sweets for allergies was senbei. Mm. <laughs> so here is your cracker. Mm. Yeah, that's a, been a problem for me once I discovered I can't have gluten. There's a lot of the um, uh, konashi has a little bit of uh, wheat in it. You can make it without, but then you just need to use uh, more expensive non non corn non flour based. Uh, yeah, it's grain like, based like soy sauce too. Yeah, so, soy sauce doesn't have any. I think there are some of the really cheap ones I've heard have, uh, have some in there. But, but that's easier to uh, deal to with figure out. Yeah. yeah, omogashi. I went to omogashi. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, you can't, you know, interrogate the hakobi while they're delivering sweets to you. No, usually not. Um, you just have to assume, and into the sleeve it goes. Into the sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> the portable rubbish bin, yes. Yeah. But I think one of the most awesome parts of November is also the new tea. Mm-hmm. So the new tea, since uh, the flavors are very, very vibrant still, mm-hmm. since the tea has just come out. And I really like the celebration because most of what we do at studying Chado is drinking tea. Mm-hmm. And if you 
drink bad tea, it can be very easy to well, not then. enjoy the experience so yeah, much yeah, as yeah. if you drink yeah. good tea. Yeah. Yeah, we're quite lucky in these days with a freezer and fridge. You can, oh, I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can keep it for a long time. Yeah. Vacuum sealing and yeah. Yeah. That's better. It would be interesting to see if, if you took, you said you liked the new tea, if mm. you took a box of new tea, tea this year, chucked it in the freezer, waited for next year, and took a box of new tea from that year, and this year, and made two bowls of tea, and see if you could taste the difference. I, I don't sort know. of done that. I've used tea that sat over the, like, for like four or five months break in between, um, hmm. like semesters over there, because the Harvard summer break is, is extraordinarily long. Mm. And so it got put away at the end of April and didn't get opened up again until the beginning of September. Mm. Um, and it tastes a little bit different, but not that much. If it's been in the freezer the whole time, mm. refrigerator, it'll be totally stale. But the freezer, about half a year, it seems to not lose too much flavor. Yeah, so you should freeze, freeze a box. Yes. I should do that. I should definitely do that because I found a tea that I really like. So I, <laughs> I don't need to do that. I don't know if I'd have the restraint. <laughs> I think I'd drink it. You just need to buy more tea. They looked at me funny at the Fukujian store downtown today. They're so like, "Oh, I want some Urasenki tea," and she pointed at it. And like, okay, he took he took to, 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 one of each, and they were like, "What? Who are you?" <laughs> Is that oh, Fukuchi and they, 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 they're all winners. All winners of yeah, that's Asian no Mukashi have been my go to tea for a long time. Mm. But I wanted to bring. We just had that the first time last week, I think. I wanted yeah. to bring one of each back home so I can compare them to see if some of the other ones are better or how I like them. But when you when I order from home, I often order like 200 gram boxes. Mm. Yeah, and I don't want to order a two hundred gram box for something I'm not sure about. Ah, so yeah, I did the same thing for for Koyamen. So I got everything they had from Koyamen, so I can do a big comparison of all the tea. The other nice thing with with Koyamen is if you're in Kyoto, you can get like a forty gram bag of tea for something like seventeen hundred yen, so mm. like sixteen fifteen dollars. Mm. Um, but they like grind it fresh like, yeah. that day. And so it only holds freshness for two weeks or so. Mm. Um, so uh, if, if you're going to use it right then, then it's actually like... If you, you order from it. them online, they will grind it, put it in a bag, and speed mail it to you. So you still have at least a week left of that yeah. <laughs> feeling when it gets to you. And then you put it in the freezer, and then you have it for another year. Yeah. <laughs> the other nice thing is when they vacuum seal them, um, I think if you don't... I've had some cans that I like set in a corner and forgot about for like a year and a half or mm. like, two years or something. And I pulled them out and I said, oh, I have this tea. And I opened it up, broke the vacuum seal, like fresh. Mm. Um, so as long as you don't break the vacuum seal, it just, it never goes bad. Uh, I've seen something out of gross, no, no, the normal tea stores in Norway, where it's almost yellow when it comes out. Yeah, it's because mm. they're not refrigerated. Yeah, I know. It's really, really bad. And this summer... Because I've always had, um, for the last decade at least, my tea room has been in the basement, no windows, right? So it's, it's when the light is off, it's dark. So tea powder that gets stuffed in places where it shouldn't be, when I come back, it's still green. But now I had a rental apartment while we were fixing our home, and then had a huge big window. And in the summer, I noticed like even almost overnight, the tea would go Yellow. white. I was thinking it would go brown, yellow, but it was pure white. Wow. But that was direct sunlight during a day. I'm always so worried of direct sunlight on tatami because <laughs> uh, it's just... The worst thing is if you have a window and it only gets on the... kind of to get direct sunlight on a portion. So you get a oh, clear yeah, line where, where, where it's, <laughs> the tatamis are faded on one side and then green on the other side. Uh, <laughs> just say it's a, it's it, it's wabi. Wabi. Yeah. Yeah. What I've done with my current tatamis is that every time I change the season, I rotate it one spot. Oh, that's a good idea. So that because since I do tea mostly alone, mm. right, seven days of the week I do tea, and only one time this 
other people there during the week. So the guest seats get worn a lot less than the Timasa. So to even it out, I turn them around or <laughs> move them from space to space. So that will solve the, the clear line in just a few seats. I, I've, uh, it reminds me of something I saw where it was uh, saying how to get a stain out of a tatami. Mm. And if you spill like coffee or something on it, mm. and it said, the, the step one, pour flour on the stain as quickly as possible. Step two, vacuum it. Step three, turn over the tatami to hide the stain. Step four, notice that you've already stained the tatami and throw it out. <laughs> <laughs> turn it over. And you need to turn the cover then. Yes. I wanted to get new covers. So back to November. So we're getting new tea. We're getting new tea. Robiraki. I think I think Robiraki is one of the most common events. Hmm. I think you. Of, I often hear hear more of Robiraki than on uh, Hatsugama. Oh really? Uh, I think this. Uh, my theory is that it can't because Hatsugama is early in the year. You've yeah. just been doing Christmas and New yeah. Year's. Oh, yeah. It's kind of a natural break. And then you come to January and you start thinking, oh, yeah, we should do Hatsugama. And then we've already shared 10 bowls of tea before we have the event. <laughs> but it, I might be wrong, but that's been my... When I yeah. look at Facebook and stuff, I see a lot more Robiraki than... People have already taken off such long times to go to, family, to see mm. family and mm. do Christmas stuff and, and New Year's things and... Yeah, no. And then by the time you get back, they're just oh, let me let me be at work for a month and just kind of get back into mm. things before I start doing something crazy. Uh-huh, that's not that's not the case at our Kai mm. at all. Really? So for us, Hatsugama is something really big. So we usually combine it uh, because our teacher used to come from Hamburg, uh, and we would all share. So everybody would do some sort of the food that would then mm. be served. Mm. So I was always responsible for the lotus root. <laughs> Another friend would always be responsible for rice. One person ah. was for, ta- for tamago, and so on. Hmm. So everybody would be a part of it, and then we would bring oh, it together. Yeah. We would be around fifteen people, mm. and then we would everybody would take some of the dishes and put them nicely on a plate, and you, then you would take another one and go mm. around, and it was just such a nice hmm. uh, feeling. And my sensei brought two bowls, so one with a with a, a five five angular. How do you call this? Pentagon. Pentagon. With pentagon. a pentagon as a foot to represent the the crane, mm. and then the other bowl was a hexagon mm. representing the turtle. Mm. So the crane represents one thousand years of luck. Mm. And the turtle represents 10,000 years of luck. Mm. So we would do tea in those two bowls, Koisa, mm. and then share them all mm. together. And this was just such a beautiful event. <laughs> it was my favorite. It's a big it's a big production in, in, in Boston as well. That's kind of the, the, the big event. Um, mm. I suppose I, 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 I just... I'm always the one who's exhausted <laughs> coming back from, from, from break um, mm. and then suddenly going into it. It was always a gamble to any given year whether or not the breaks would line up that I'd actually be in Boston yeah. to for yeah. Hatsugama. Um, so I wasn't able to do um, the 2019 Hatsugama because mm. I was actually not in, in the city at the time. Mm. But um, 2018 and 2017 I was I was in, mm. and it's 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 interesting. It's a much more like a Chakai sort of event. Like it's less. Um, I don't want to say like less personal in a, in a sort of pejorative sense, but it is much more of like a Tankokai event. Mm. Um, uh, and it's like the first Seki has like the Consul General invited yeah. and um, it has yeah, all these sort of things too. Mm. So it's it's a really important event and, and everybody has a lot of fun, mm. but it is also nice. It, I sort of like compare it with Dikyuki and Nobidaki, which are just held mm. in the Boston Children's Museum practice mm. space, which is kind of the, the like normal every week practice space for most of the Dhamma Kai members. Mm. And um, it's like a little bit more kind of just the Dhamma Kai, mm. whereas the, the, yeah, the you might, is a little, might be right a little bit outward about this, thing. because I think Warsaw does something similar, I think. Hatsugama is big, you know. Mm. Maybe that's why, seen from the outside, you get more Robirakis, because mm. people can, there's more of them, but yeah. each of them is a smaller event. Yeah. While the Hatsugamas 
a much bigger event. Mm. And I also think that because they're much bigger, they get spread out over a longer time. Yeah. And then, so you, you have them from like early January to February, maybe. Indeed. Yeah. Well, Robbie Rocky is like, Beginning. because it's a small thing, it's, doom, doom, it happens early November. Yeah, no, Boston's is generally like January 20th or something like mm. that. Mm. Um, but they do a whole tin scene and everything, and so yeah. like food comes out, and sake comes out, and Glenn Sensei mm. is always attending to the guests. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. At Dead we also got the chance to be a part of a seki at uh, Gakuen, mm? and they would serve us zanzai, which was amazing. <laughs> so so cool. so hot red bean soup with the mochi mm. on the inside and it was just so lovely it just warmed up your whole body and then to go into the room and see the steam coming out of the kama like there is this special thing about jo that i especially like is when you first open the kama at just the steam coming out it's amazing and then the first um scoop of water for chasentoshi mm. it's just steamy everything is steaming it's such a magical feeling and mm. especially if the room is a bit darker it's oh, you're just yeah. put back in time and one thing we, we've really noticed nice. in the at least the the kohai one thing that we've noticed in our in our cake was our jitsugi is that um we all, all often have the the Shoji opens like the tea rooms in Gakuen mm. all are like have shoji on all sides, but it means you can also open them and often mm. open a window to the outside. Yep. And because we use actual sumi charcoal, mm. which incidentally is one of the massive benefits of the Dorikai, is you get to learn how to actually do sumi, mm. which you can't really do anywhere else. Um, but because we're actually using it, you know, sumi it doesn't just let off CO2; it also lets off CO carbon monoxide. Mm. And so if you're not careful, it'll give you a headache. Like, mm. if you're in a closed room, it's dangerous, but mm. if you're in a ventilated enough room, it'll just give you a headache and make you feel unwell. Mm. And so a lot of the teachers actually open up the the windows mm. to the doji, mm. or they, like, let you open up the windows to the doji, even just off and on, to, to mm. kind of get some fresh air into the room. Mm. And so when you do that, the light is coming in, mm. and it sort of catches the steam, and you can see really clearly the steam mm. coming out. And one thing that we've noticed is that the way that, like, it, when a do is actually put in a real dodan, like mm. a real mm. do with the walls just so and, and everything and sunken into the right depth, um, and it's using ash at the bottom, so it's kind of managing the airflow as it comes mm. in. And you put the charcoal in in a certain way to get the air to flow in. Um, kind of like, unlike the electric, which is just sort of the air comes and goes as it pleases, because it mm. it's electric, it doesn't matter. The, the charcoal is sort of managing the airflow and it kind of creates this vortex above the kama mm. and so sometimes you'll notice the steam sort of starts spinning in this strange kind of tornado thing above the kama and just whoosh up to the ceiling mm. it just it reminds me of um, like depictions of in Shingon temples of Mahaviroshana when he's holding his hands in this like five fingers grasping one finger mm. position and the five fingers are supposed to be this like in one interpretation, this sort of like fiery tornado that like whisks you up to enlightenment or something. <laughs> um, in in one interpretation, there's a, there's a thousand interpretations. Um, there's also like the five in one element, but anyways. Um, so the uh, yeah, I, I I really love sometimes you 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 kind of find yourself spacing out a little bit, and then you just see something really pretty like that, and it kind of grounds you back in. Um, and all these little things that you, little things like that that you can't really see, or you you don't even realize, kind of that you're missing them until you come and spend enough time with the actual thing. Yeah. So I think that is one of the one of the benefits of Midori Kai. Mm. Uh, it's a huge benefit to be able to see everything the way it's supposed to be, mm. because there's not many compromises in Midori Kai. Indeed. This, like, the sweets you get. Ah, for instance, right? The, we're the, so lucky. The awesome sweets from the best sweet maker yes. every day. The tea you get yes. is fresh, good, high quality tea from all the different. You get to use sumi all season. Yes. You have a 
road that is made by the mud wall thing. Oh, yeah. He's like bumping and it's <laughs> messed up forever. Oh, don't be the first to bump it. <laughs> yes, we can't tell you how many times we had that said to us. <laughs> Just don't be the first. <laughs> they said, and if you bump it and it cracks, everyone goes, <gasps> and if it cracks and then a piece falls off, then you might be thrown out the window or something. Because <laughs> apparently it costs like over a thousand dollars or something to, to, get yeah, it, to get it fixed. Crazy it's crazy expensive. But that's what I mean. There's no compromises. Mm. So... Often, when you other places, it's like my tea room as it has been up to now. It's like everything is the way it's supposed to be, except you have to ignore that both the guest and the the host comes in from the same door. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's a brick wall behind that uh, other place where the guest ought to have entered from, so you have to use the door in the room. And um, but this break the wall. Yeah, which I, which I actually, actually know have done. <laughs> so yes. The wall is gone. Awesome. <laughs> to be able to have a proper entrance. But what I mean is, is here there's no compromises. Everything is the way it's supposed to be and yeah. enough money has been put behind it. to like, yeah. And then yeah. it's hard to, to understand. Because at least for me, students. You come, you don't pay anything. Actually, you, you get a scholarship and yeah. I, it's... Quite a costly program to attend if you are okay. Japanese. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. You know, it's like I think, um, I think it's like thirty thousand dollars a year or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, which for an American school is like standard, but um, and I mean, it's even it's even crazier when you think in Japan, university like barely costs anything yeah. at all. Mm-hmm. Um, like you know. To, to American listeners, we think 30000 a year. That's actually not that bad. To um, everybody else, it's like, what? What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you think that in Japan, you can still pay for university by having a part-time job. I mean, I come from countries, and I live in a country where university is free. Yeah, so for same. Me, I couldn't possibly imagine to spend that kind of money on education, it seems. I think 30000 Well, Harvard's, is... Harvard's sticker price per year is almost $70,000 a year. Nobody pays it, but... 30000 I think, is the amount I spend on living cost for my five-and-a-half-year education. I wasted a couple of years, maybe said seven years or whatever I spent. There's a living... The, the, the loan I had for my entire thing is the same as one year. Yeah. This school. I mean, this is a program that is on the very expensive side so that everybody can just yeah. go and join. I would like to argue it is a very, very good program. There are no expenses spent. So the students do get taught by the best teachers mm-hmm. that they are. They get to attend offerings. They get to help out at offerings and really learn the behind the scenes. Yeah, that's, they that's another to, thing that... Uh, Attending the big events, yes. you could really see it when we went to Finland. Mm-hmm. We were like uh, 11, yeah. 20 Midori Kai students in Finland. No, many people never met each other before. It was like instant, perfect working team. Everybody knew what to do because you'd done heaps and heaps of these big events uh, in Kyoto. So you know what was expected and everybody had the same kind of grounding in. It's nice to uh, it's nice to have that reference point. Um, mm-hmm. Although I'd also say, like, kind of on the flip side, that um, mm-hmm. you know, there are some people who, especially Japanese, who are kind of here in this epicenter of tea, and um, like they're here for their whole lives, pretty much, and they're always doing tea in this mm-hmm. environment. And there are some people who are always in proper tea rooms and always mm-hmm. have the, the best exact things or something. And so I think that also one of the other things that makes Midori Kai really special is that we, our time here is limited Mm -hmm. and that we like um, graduate and then we're on a plane flight back to wherever we came from, you know, the tea Um, desert, the tea desert. (laughs) Yes. But sort of, um, you know, if if we're the, the, the tea Bedouins, we have, we have our resourcefulness. And so, you know, we, we're coming into it knowing that these things or like a sort of a luxury yeah. almost like it's yeah. it's it's very yeah. seldom that you're ever going to have a chance to have all these different things 
And so then we go back, and like the education doesn't just stop here. It also continues when you go back home and try to figure out, okay, all this stuff I just learned how to do. How can like, I do that? How do I do that? And yeah. I feel like that help, makes you understand it better, too. I had a long talk with uh, Gary Sensei yesterday about um, Chaji and, in particular, the Kai Seki. Mm-hmm. Uh, and kind of how to do it in a uh, manageable way oh, to, to make it enjoyable for everybody. And, mm. oh, I wish I could be a yeah. fly on a wall and yeah. that kind of <laughs> say so. It, rem- it like reminds me of, of the sort of mental process you have to go through to do like yakugate, for example, when you've been doing hongate for ages and then you go to do yakugate and all of a sudden some things are different and some things are the mm-hmm. same. And you have to learn, wait a second, okay, what things were because it's a left-right hand thing and what things were because it's kamiza geza. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like it makes you learn why it was that you were doing these things before in hongate, mm-hmm. whereas before you just sort of were saying like, this is what I do to do. do, do. And you didn't really unpack, like, why it was that you were doing these things. So I think, like, especially in the beginning, it's a little bit kind of, uh, at least for me, is a little bit, it makes me a little bit flustered sometimes because it's sort of like, you're doing this and that and that and that and that and that and, that, and then you do these steps um, uh, to, like, prepare the museum or to, to, to do this cleaning task or something like that or to get little ready. Um, and then it's sort of like my instinct is, well, why are you doing this? Um but if you just hang around with like perfect role with all the utensils you ever need, you'll never learn kind of like what's the most important thing. If you wanted to like do sumi yourself in a different country and you had to like make a lot of the stuff yourself or, or you only had a budget to order a couple things from Japan, mm. what's the most important thing mm. to do? You know, if you're going to be making this yourself, like what, is it vital that the role is so and so deep? Is it vital that mm. you have sumi exactly in this size or exactly from this tree like you have to I'm trying of... to figure out that yes yeah I, uh... <laughs> I made it from I made some sumi from a random tree uh, the problem is that it doesn't really light and keeps burning so it lights and burns as long as there are external heat source to keep lighting it so if you kind of think about, you have a shtabi and you lean sumi into it, as it burns, it will slowly fall toward and therefore burn to the end. But when I tried to make shtabi of my homemade sumi, it would never kind of become glowing more than like the bottom half centimeter, because it would crumble before kind of lighting itself all the way up. So I have to try it with some other pieces of wood. Must have been it works, Noro. So when I went today, I went picked up uh, nine kilos of uh, misia sumi. Here's a figure I can just put those uh, stubbies in the middle and I put my homemade sumi around, mm. and it will uh, boil the kettle. Mm. And then I get proper sumi for the chaji or whatever. Mm. But mm-hmm. um, especially at my cabin tea room, there's no electrical. Raw, raw, so it's always to me. So I go through a bit. Uh, in yeah. a year. So, well, I think we've, we've gone a long episode. Uh, <laughs> so it was, uh, it was really great talking to you guys. Uh, I hope you have an awesome, awesome rest of uh, Midori Kai well, Stay. Thank you, <laughs> I'm sure we will. Yes. And then to the listeners, until next time, thank you for listening. This has been a production of T-Life Audio. You may use this show in any non-commercial endeavor as long as credit is provided to T-Life Audio. If you enjoyed this show, please rate us at iTunes or Stitcher.